Welcome back to the third and final part of the WaveTech Synthesized Function Generator Model 288 series. In a previous video, I discussed why I was making note that here we have Synthesized Function Generator Model 288 on this label, but on this label we have generator signal SG12884 slash G. Well, what's happening here is on this little placard, we can see that there's a contract number. This contract number was a contract won by WaveTech for the U.S. military. They used these units in the late 1980s, early 90s for radio transmitter and receiver functions, both in stationary and mobile aspects, and for different capabilities, but primarily those. So this particular unit is synthesized, and it meaning that it has a function generator aspect here, very basic, but it has more of a signal generator aspect here in the center with this particular setup and capability. This here is just a control panel. So we'll go through this quickly, and as always, we can see that the unit's been on for 20 minutes. It has auto-calibrated, and we'll just talk about the features briefly, and then we'll go into looking at the um, signals on the oscilloscope and we'll talk about some of the functions and features of this particular unit. Here we see the frequency button so if we press that we can see that the default is one kilohertz and that's from a RAM chip that we talked about again in another video where the battery has to be replaced if you have one of these and it's been a long time since that's happened. That RAM chip stores a basic reset calibration and starting place for this particular unit. In this case, the frequency they start with is one kilohertz. If we press this button again, we can see that's one millisecond per, right? So that's the, st the baseline. If we go to amplitude, we can see that the amplitude is set at 18 dBm, five volts peak to peak, uh, two and a half volts peak, and then um, 1.77 volt R RMS, and we'll talk about that here shortly. Symmetry, th this has a symmetry that goes uh, 0.5 to 0.95, but the, the baseline is right in the center as it should be 50 percent. And of course there's an offset value for DC offset as well, we'll talk about that just a little bit. As we're going down from left to right, we can see here also that we have a panel lock button, and that's simply what's, what it means. Panel lock, you press any button, turn, whatever, it just locks the panel out for safety aspects so you don't hit something during a, a critical operation. Here we have parameter reset. So let's say we'll go to frequency. We started here, and I want to I reset this just right in the moment. I can hit that no matter what I'm on. Maybe I was in amplitude, and I, I, I decided... Uh, let's go back to the baseline. Boom. Goes right back to that baseline. So that's kind of nice. Um, the cursor is obviously very uh, self-explanatory. You can hit the cursor you can, and it'll move the, the digits. Let's go to frequency as another. So you can see I'm here I'm in kilohertz. Now I'm suddenly in megahertz. I can move the decimal point and the cursor will take me there. Uh, if I want to start all over again, I can hit this button here, reset, and start over. So if I go to frequency, you can see that's reset. Amplitude's back at 5, uh, so forth and so on. Uh, we'll have to display this, but you can see it says modulation, start and stop. There's a time, um, and then you can select this button. That'll get you to a AM, uh, amplitude modulation, FM frequency, uh, VCF, uh, and sweep function, and then uh, back to the st standard value here. So. Here we have a local and address. This is if you have this unit hooked up to a GPIP uh, cable and let's say you want a computer to operate this and you want to control this from a computer. Uh, there's a cable output on the back that allows you to talk through the GPIP uh, format. And if you know what that is, if you don't, you'll have to look at the manual or uh, research that a little bit. It's far. It's a whole other video <laughs> to go into, and here again is just a function uh, com control panel. So we have the knob. Of course, we can disable that knob. We can enable that knob as we did in the other videos. Uh, here we have a clearing and centering uh, knob. We have enter. You know, just a standard control panel, kind of almost self-explanatory. 
Here we have the ability to change the ohm of the output of the unbalanced uh, portion of this um, function generator. The default is 50 ohms. Now we also have a balanced here and that's these two guys. Why would you want balanced or unbalanced? Well that's pretty um, again self-explanatory for, for radio guys and technical guys but if you have say another device you're hooking up to this um, let's say you're gonna do the uh, an input here you may want to use the output to your next device in case both of the chassis are grounded to the same ground and you are experiencing a ground loop so in this case you would use the unbalanced portion of this for your output rather than um, sorry you would use the balanced portion of this rather than your unbalanced portion so let's get this puppy hooked up and we'll show you a few features before we dive too much further into this wave tech I thought I would point out a neat feature back here that is still in use today um, many places in the world and that's the ability to use different voltages so if you're traveling to different countries and they have they have different offerings the International Electrotechnical Commission has come up with a standard that they use, which is the IEC cable. This is one of many standards that they have, but probably the most prominent in uh, industrial, commercial, and consumer applications, where this particular shape of a cable, let's see if I have one laying around here. Yeah, this particular end, in this case, the female end, is utilized uh, for the device and then the other end is appropriate to the country in which you're in for convenience sake. Now this particular model ha uses a card system and this is still used today um, in various different electronics. So here we have 120 volts. So this is a card. If you were to turn this card, flip it this way, put it back in, you could potentially use a 220 volt uh, input source for your voltage on this uh, unit. You could also go 100, like say you were traveling in northern, or I think eastern Japan actually, uh, where, where sometimes there's 100 volts available, or you, some parts of Europe are 220 and others can actually be 240. So in this case, as you're looking, the upper left-hand corner is what you're after for the voltage. In this case, I'm in America, so I'll put 120 in my upper left and put that card back in carefully. And now she's ready to rock for 120 volts. This particular one has a standard fuse. If you wanted to pull the fuse out, you just pull that little lever right there, change the fuse, good to go. It's also good to check these, make sure that they're in spec with the manual. So now we'll talk quickly about the uh, International Electrotechnical Commission, and I'll show you a few of the cables that they offer. So here we can see the web page for the International Electrotechnical Commission, or IEC.ch. So if you're interested in what they're about, they were founded many, many years ago to give safety across different platforms for consumers, industry, commercial applications for electrical uh, safety requirements as well as conveniences so maybe one country could sell their device to several different countries and not have to make five different models so one of the uh, that's only one of the many things they do so if you want to know more about them check them out uh, pretty awesome so one of the things that they often came up with and many countries have signed on to is the IEC cable system so here for instance for the American style, you'll see that we have the IEC cable here, and the opposite end is the U.S. standard. So that would be for a 120 volt system. Here we see another offering. I'm not going to tell you which country this comes from, but you can take a guess or look it up even better. And here is an example of an IEC cable that has a male and female application for certain devices where they take one or the other. Additionally, 
they even make them, of course, I've mentioned Europe. Uh, in this case, this is, would be the Europe style, and you can even change the end if you're if you travel like I do, and sometimes you need to, you don't have a cable, so you make a cable. At any rate, that would be the European standard. So here we can see that I've set up a little test area that also has my oscilloscope hooked up. And currently I have the probe to the oscilloscope. And the probe is showing 0.5 volts or 500 millivolts at 1 kilohertz. And actually we can turn that on here. We can show the uh, frequency. And let's see here. Let's go show the... Uh, peak to peak voltage, and uh, let's see, we can even do the amplitude, and uh, that's it for the moment. We'll, we'll get into the other things in just a minute. So, here again is one kilohertz, and then we can see that uh, we have 540 roughly uh, peak to peak, and the, the scope is set to 500 millivolts, but actually what's coming out is roughly 540 and then the channel's amplitude is just showing the same thing here. So if we remember that, and I pull the probe out, and I hook up just B and C cable to B and C cable here, and I come here to a T, which is a male to female to female B and C connector, and I'll cheat here and use my auto set, we can see the same thing, one kilohertz sine wave. But if we notice, the peak-to-peak -peak voltage has changed here. Huh, well, I wonder why that might be. Well, let me look at my amplitude. I see that my amplitude is 5 volts, peak-to-peak. -peak. Well, my oscilloscope is set 2 volts peak-to-peak, -peak, so let me try to get that to 5 volts. Oh, there's 5 volts peak-to-peak. -peak. But wait a minute my oscilloscope is still saying that it's 10 volts peak to peak. Well, how can that be? Well, if I have a 50 ohm load here, and my oscilloscope has a 50, 50 load input, it should automatically put the voltage divider on there, and I should have the same values. But in this case, we don't. So what we need to do is put a 50 ohm load on that, which is actually just a 50 ohm uh, resistor on the inside under this little cap. And now notice the sine wave when I ch put this on here so the devices can be accurate with each other. Now we can see that I have a peak voltage of 5.2 volts. And if we move this vertical line, we can see that it is peak to peak at 5 volts. So now they're calibrated with each other. Now if I had a need for a 75 ohm, depending on the device, maybe I had a spectrum analyzer that had a 75 ohm input, I would need to possibly, depending again on the device, put a 75 ohm load on there so these guys could be calibrated to one another. So that's the purpose of that. So if you're using this, and your oscilloscope has a 50 ohm input, you may also need to add a voltage, voltage divider by adding a 50 ohm load there. So that's something else. Again, you can learn. There's way better teachers out there than me. I'm only focusing on this device. Uh, if you want to get into the uh, scientific aspects and math behind all that, better guys out there than me. So, moving on. Now, let's take a look at something here what this is capable of doing. So if I hit frequency, and let's say I wanted to change my frequency, let's go to something really low, like 120 hertz. You can see that my sine wave has changed drastically here. And I can barely see that I've got a sm small, or large rather, rise and fall, but I can't see the entire thing. So in my case, again, I'll cheat, I'll hit auto reset, and I can see that I have a peak to peak voltage of 5 volts again, and I can see my 120 hertz frequency on there depicted by here. So this is generally pretty accurate. So let's take a look at this signal generator portion just a little bit more in one function that it's capable of doing as far as the sweep is concerned. 
So the sweep can be used for many functions, um, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. But if I hit this button here that says start, you can see that the factory calibration, again, sitting on that RAM baseline is 2 hertz. If we hit the stop, I currently set it to 2 kilohertz just to show a frequency range, a very small one. And then we can show the time. The default is 1, uh, but if we say the sweep time, I can change it, let's say, to 10 seconds. Boom. And we can change this to sweep, and we can watch it sweep. We'll turn this up a little bit. So what it's doing now is it's going from 2 hertz to 2,000 kilohertz over the period of 10 seconds. So what you're seeing is the display of that, the oscilloscope tracking that. So this can be utilized for things like troubleshooting speakers, believe it or not, troubleshooting parts of audio circuits, parts of radios, uh, oscillators. It can be used for uh, troubleshooting components within a, a system or if you're... Um, if you're building and designing a, a specific part of a circuit, you can utilize as many functions. So again, better teachers out there on YouTube than I, uh, but that's for this. So that's that function. So we'll go back here. Now you'll see it says AM and FM, and then there's an input here. So um, amplitude modulation and frequency modulation, and the... A capability for this thing is to be able to put in a frequency that you want to have a carrier wa wave ride over and then you can use this sweep function out to see that wave or the standard out to, to see what wave you're creating and that is I believe what more the military use this particular function for. So I thought we'd quickly talk about the amplitude here. The oscilloscope is measuring in one way to get its information on that screen, but a digital multimeter will read in another. So I have this digital multimeter in line with this circuit coming out of this uh, signal generator or frequency generator, and if I put this on volts, you'll see that it's 1.7 volts. What does that mean? I thought it was 5 volts peak to peak. Well, this says it's 5 volts peak to peak, peak to peak, see that right there? Well, there's a little thing called RMS, and I challenge you to Google it and figure out why a digital multimeter is making a measurement, getting 1.7 volts. And if I click this amplitude, and I look here, I see that it is 1.7 volts RMS. Well, this digital multimeter is reading the RMS value. The oscilloscope reads something else. So there's a little homework for you to discover why that might be, but just to show the accuracy here, fairly close, 1.76, 1.77, so this unit's uh, right on. So another neat thing that I thought I'd show you is, or actually can't show you, but have you listened to? What is the frequency of 1 kilohertz? Well, I have a little amp here, and I'm going to just click it on. I'm going to turn this up. Can you hear that? That is one kilohertz. Well, what does it sound like if I hit this button here to sweep? Isn't that neat? Okay, so I thought I'd show you something else here. Uh, if you're into audio, um, let's say we look at a really, really accurate guitar tuner. And if you know uh, anything about the A string of a guitar or the frequency 440, say, on a piano, and you wanted to listen to that and check the accuracy here, look at that. 440 
right on straight away. Well, it's not really loud enough for this guy. There we go. So let's say you wanted to look at C, which is 523. It's right on, just a little bit under according to this. A quick demonstration of the... Uh, now, you'll notice this is on sine wave. If we change this to square wave, the accuracy climbs. See how dead center that is? Square wave is used quite a bit in the audio world. So speaking of which, let's go through this a little bit. We'll set this uh, frequency back to the default, which is a thousand, uh, or sorry, one, um, should be, yeah, one kilohertz. And right now we're looking at a sine wave. Make that a little bit bigger so we can see. But this can also function down here to a triangle wave. Can also function to a square wave. And, of course, this has a DC offset. If you don't know what that is, again, Google. Um, so let's talk about the symmetry. So the symmetry is set at 50%. So watch the signal as I change it more positive to the right. Now we're at 95%. And here we'll go 5%. So you can actually see that the symmetry can be changed. And that goes for square wave as well. Very useful when creating circuits. Okay, let's see. Uh, what else can I tell you about this? That's really about it in a, in a, in a nutshell. So a great unit. Uh, I think you can pick them up on eBay for about a buck, about a hundred bucks. I think I've seen them for, and um, very solid, really well built, very accurate units. So, um, oh, this is a neat one. Let's uh, let's do this. Calibrate. Watch this. This is the calibration function happening. setting all the parameters. Pretty cool.